Everything flourishes, for he breathed the breath of life into man, and today he calls you. Open your heart to his word. He calls upon you to praise and glorify his holy name, to exalt the name of Jesus in unity, because we are family. We are Simon. There is no shadow. ever overcome your light and there is no rival that could ever stand against your might you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won Show me one thing that's true. 
to praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain Now all of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain Now all of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment Stand against the 
That's why I call 
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would He fail now? He won't
it on you and I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through and rain came and wind blew but my house was built on you and I'm safe on you and I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through we are all gonna make it through so whatever situation you're going through whatever problem you have in your life whatever storm whatever trial you have just know that you're safe with God and you're gonna make it through no matter what you're gonna make it through the enemy wants to come and destroy us the enemy wants to come and bring us down but when we go down we get right back up because we're standing on Jesus and we have the strength that Jesus has given us and we're going to make it through just like David even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because his rod and his staff is with me so we are standing firm on God and we're not going to falter so don't be like Peter when he's walking on the water and look into the side because then he's going to fall. But when God picks him, when Jesus picks him up, Peter says a word. He says, never let me go. So we know that Jesus is not letting us go. He's with us. He's always with us. And he will always be with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. 
Good morning, church. Where we are what? Yes, good morning, online community. Welcome. We thank you for watching. One day we're going to see you here, but thank you for watching. Amen, amen. Do we have any visitors here in our church today? We got one over here. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Any other visitors? We got another one over here. Welcome, welcome. You are family. So at the end of the service, we want to um, have you go at the end. We want to uh, say thank you for coming. Welcome. So you can be uh, you're part of this church. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm speaking by faith that you're going to be part of this church. So I'm walking on faith. But thank you for watch, uh, for coming. At the end of the service, I believe it's going to be Pastor Janita. Yes, okay, Pastor Janita is going to be at the end. And she's going to go uh, and take you where the pastors want to uh, greet you and uh, welcome you. Thank you. Um, so, we had a long week. Now, if you haven't seen anybody for the week, you may give them a hug and say welcome. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. anybody have any petitions any prayer that you need is there anybody here that needs prayer just raise your hand amen 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 thank you Jesus all right so let's go ahead and pray for the offering and the tithing Let's do some exercises. You guys can stand up. We're going to do some squats here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this day that you have given us, the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the people, Father, your people, the Lord Jesus. Um, Thank you that uh, those that are going to give, Father, that you just multiply it and continue to multiply it, the Lord Jesus. Because we believe that you can, Father. You're a mathematical God, Father. Sometimes I don't understand your math, the Lord Jesus, but hey, we're okay, Father. But we know that you're going to bless it and we're going to know that you're going to multiply it, Father. Bless the tithings, the Lord Jesus, as well, Father. Those that give, Father, that you just continue to uh, just increase it, Father, and increase it in your household, Father. Bless those that give, the Lord Jesus, and continue to cover them, Father, in your name, the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The ushers are going to come around um, and uh, pass the uh, baskets so you can give. Um, now we have the uh, announcements. The students stay in the sanctuary today. Um, they're going to be receiving a wonderful word uh, today. Uh, baptismal classes, Wednesday, March 20th. If you are wanting to get baptized, um, thinking about getting baptized, uh, you can take the class uh, Wednesday, March 20th. Uh, please see Pastor Janita um, for, the, uh, for the classes. And in correction, uh, Pastor Marcelino is going to be taking the um, visitors. He's right here. Uh, amen. He will take you at the end. Um, habitation service. Uh, please come Friday, March 29th. We will have a habitation uh, service here on Friday, the 29th of March. Come receive a power. You know, we're going to have worship. Um, testimonial, a prophetic, uh, and, a, and a word. So come and enjoy the service on the 29th of March. Uh, drive through prayer. If you have never done this, we're going to have one on Saturday, March 30th. Um, uh, please see Pastor Hugo and Lisa uh, Abednegos. But we're gonna, it's going to be here in the um, parking lot of the church. This is where we can um, minister to the community, people that drive by, people that will turn around, come back, ask for prayer. This is to um, basically, you know, um, basically 
minister to the com uh, community, minister to, uh, to the people that are, uh, that are hurting, lost. You know, we don't know. We don't know what they're going through. You know, and sometimes they, when we have this, they'll stop by and we'll pray for them. It's a chance to invite them to church. All right. So um, let's, it's going to be on the 30th of uh, March. So if you want to come, please see uh, Pastor uh, Abenego and Ilsa. And then uh, Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. This is going to be an amazing, amazing service. Um, please come. We're still going to have um, an English and Spanish service. So uh, please invite. We're going to ha we have cards in the um, lobby that are English and Spanish. Take at least 10 and, and give them to your friends that don't come to church or that you know that don't come to church. Just give it to them or that don't have a church. Give it to them so that way they can come and uh, receive. And hopefully they can be, um, not hopefully, I know that they will be part of this church. I'm speaking by faith. All right. So um, Monday night prayer uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, come and join us for that. Uh, Wednesday night equip, 7 p.m. Um, and then Friday night life groups at 7.30. So if you don't have one, please see Pastor um, uh, Linda for that. And we, and we can get you um, assigned to one of those. All right. So now without further ado, uh, we now present Pastor Dennis who's going to present the speaker of the day, or the morning, should I say. Amen. God bless everyone. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, we're who's, who's with me with, in the journey to freedom? Anyone, anyone enjoying the, the journey? Anyone um, struggling with the journey? <laughs> Come on, be honest. Be honest. Uh, but I, I'm really excited, and so... I was a little bit sneaky. I decided, hey, um, this journey is really difficult. Uh, I'm going to need some support. So I'm going to give it the toughest ones. I'm going to give it to the people that I trust and, and probably know a little bit more, have more experience. So I gave him all the stuff, the tough stuff, which is Pastor Vasquez. He's going to bring us the word. But I want to tell you, um, he has been a, 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 a tremendous blessing in my life, my family's life, more than he can imagine. And so I'm really thankful to him, not only for his friendship, um, for his um, experience that he shares with me, the corrections that he gave me sometimes. Not that many, but he gives me some. Um, um, and just other things that he's done that he just bring his family, his whole family, his wife, his kids, they're all a blessing to us. And so without further ado, I want to give him the opportunity to give us the toughest message part in, in this series. And But hey, on, the notes are available online, so if you want to follow because it's, it's going to be good. Amen. Hallelujah. First, I want to give thanks to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Then I want to give thanks to the pastors of the house, Pastor Dennis Feliciano and Pastor Woodfeather Feliciano. Then I want to give thanks to my wife and my family. My wife is coming for the second service, and my daughter is already here singing, as you saw her. Uh, and I want to thank God for her. She's the one that helped me put this PowerPoint together. Amen. So let's get into the word, and let me, let me correct that. She did the PowerPoint. I, I, I gave her the information because <laughs> I was struggling, man, I'm telling you. But God is good. Hallelujah. So we, uh, we're going to go right into the journey here. Uh, we, we, we are on the journey to freedom. Glory to God. And then uh, so today, the series so far, we have gone through. Okay, something's happening here. There we go. Okay, there we go. So part number one was, what, who does God say you are? Part number two, which we went over, was the types of baggage. Part number three was the spiritual laws. Part number four was the issues of the soul. All those have been recorded. All of those are online, and uh, you can get access if you miss one. So today, it's part five, which is exposing the unseen enemy. Now, when Pastor Dennis asked me to do this part, there was, there's actually so much stuff in it, I asked him if it was possible to break it down into two sections because, you know, I could give you a whole bunch of stuff at one time and maybe overload you. I said, Let me, if you can give me two, two Sundays, I could break it down to a, a, a reasonable amount of information that the people can be blessed. And, you know, through his mercy and his grace, he let me have the second Sunday. 
So we're going to do part A today, which is exposing the unseen enemy. And then we're going to do the second part next Sunday. Everybody's with me. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So the first thing we know is that the, the message is going to be a fourfold method of Satan's attacks. We're going to be talking about the attacks of the enemy. We're going to be talking about doorways. We're going to be talking about legal ground. Amen. So just if you get all the notes if you want. But there's a fourfold method that Satan attacks people. His first thing that he uses is deception. All right. And we're going to go into each one of these. The second one that he, uh, he is attacked is in the occult activities. And we're going to touch on some of those. And then also through physical illness. He attacks through physical illness. And also the last one is mental disorders. And we're going to go over each and every one of these. Amen. And I hope that God will touch you and bless you. And then something miraculous is going to happen at the end. Okay. So um, does the devil uh, really exist? Okay. There are some people and there are some churches that don't believe in a literal devil or the person as a devil. I remember years ago when my older sister got saved. She, she was living in Florida. She called me. She got saved. I was praising God because she got saved. She started going to a church. She told me about the church. She said, this church is awesome. It was on Miami Beach. They were ministering to the drug addicts and the homeless and bringing them in. I said, oh, great. Well, what is the doctrine of the church? She goes, well, I, I don't really know the doctrine of the church. I said, well, no problem. When Millie and I went to visit her, we went to the church. So any church that you visit should have either their doctrinal beliefs online or uh, handouts at the front of the church that tells you what the church believes. Everybody's with me, amen? Because you don't want to start going to a church, you know, and you're there for two or three months and then they, one Sunday they say okay well now we're going to have human sacrifice and the brother right here is going to be the sacrifice wait a minute so you want to know what they believe and why they believe that so we went in there and I took one of the flyers and one of the first things that I saw was they do not believe in a literal devil they believe that the, uh, the devil is the evil that's within us and the manifested in people's lives and I was like what are you kidding I said, what Bible are you guys reading? You know, and then, so we, we, if you look at the Bible, it's, it's pretty clear. Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 19. Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 19. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him. Now, listen what it says, to the king of Tyre. Okay, so people say that he's talking about the literal king. Say to him, thus saith the Lord God. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden. Was the king of Tyre in Eden? No. So he can't be talking to a literal person. You're going to see that he's talking to Satan himself. He says, the garden of every, every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day that you were created. You were the anointed cherub. A cherub is a type of angel. Okay? So the king of Tyre is not an angel. He's a human being. So we know he's not talking about the king of Tyre. He says, you were the anointed cherub who covers. And God, this is God speaking to him. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till the iniquity was found in you. See, the devil's a created being. He's not a perfect, everlasting being like God is. He was created just like all the other angels. He said, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground, and I lay you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from the mist. I devoured you. And I turned you into ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the people are astonished of you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. 
So he was a, a created perfect. He was an anointed cherub. So he's an angel. He was covered by every precious stone. He had timbrels and pipes, the, the, the musical instruments. That's why they believe that Satan was to charge of the worship music up in heaven. But whatever it is, we know that he loves to use music to lure people in and to bind people. Could somebody say amen with me? Okay, he, had, he was in the Garden of Eden. He had access to God, but iniquity was found in him, and because of beauty, he corrupted with himself the reason of his righteousness. So this talks about a literal devil. This is not talking about some evil from within somebody. Now look at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 16. These are the two main chapters that you will see is talking about Satan. Now look what it says. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground. You are weakened. You are who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, if you remember anything about this scripture of Isaiah, there's five I wills that got the devil kicked out of heaven. Okay? There's five I wills in this scripture that got the devil kicked out of heaven. The first one, he says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the mount north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And you know, God is a long-suffering God. And God is a merciful God. And I believe God was just sitting back and listening as he was saying, I will, and I will, and I will. But you know, there comes a point where God says, enough is enough. Can somebody say amen with me? Hallelujah. And look at the last one. I believe this is where God said, okay, that's it. That is it. When he said the last one, he said, I will be like the most high. Ain't nobody going to be like God, I'm telling you. And God will not share his glory with anybody, hallelujah. I am the Lord and I change not, he says. I am a jealous God. And look what he says. You shall be brought down to show to the depths of the pit. He was kicked out of heaven. Look at the next scripture we're going to check out here. Look at all those I wills. That's what I'm showing you there. Glory to God. Revelation 12 and 9 says, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of all called the devil and Satan. Is there a real devil? You better believe it. And look what it says. Who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Come on, Come on somebody say amen. On. That devil, God said, that's, that's enough. He kicked them out of heaven. Because he said, I will be like the most high. When you try to be God, boy, you are in trouble. Can somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. That's enough, God. The, Satan, uh, he wants to keep his existence a secret so that he can continue to wreak havoc in the lives of believers and non-believers. You know, folks say, I don't want to say the name of Satan because he may appear to me. Well, if you got Jesus Christ, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Any demon, any spirit comes into the house, that's your house, amen. That house belongs to the Holy Spirit. You got all authority, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I like to people say amen with me. So he wants to keep his existence a secret so that he could continue to wreak havoc in the lives of the believers and the non-believers. So he got kicked out. I said, okay, where we going? All right, here we go. We got it. We got it. Look at Daniel chapter 10, verse 11 through 13. I'm giving you all this so we can get into the question of whether there's a real devil or not. You, you got to believe there is. And Daniel, he saw an angel, and he said, and, and this is the angel talk, speaking to Daniel. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said, this is the angel talking to him, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. So from the first moment that Daniel began to pray to God, God heard his words. Now, I'm telling you, people, when we begin to pray to God, God hears our words. Now, it may seem like they're just going up to the ceiling and coming back down. It may seem like that nobody understands. But God hears every word. Can somebody say praise the Lord? And look what he said. He said, and I have come because of your word. So God sent a messenger to him. But look what happened. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which we believe is another kind of angel, withstood me how many days? 
21 days. From the first day he began to pray, God sent the message, but then another angel came and tried to block God's message. Hallelujah. 21 days. But we know that God is greater than anybody. Can somebody say praise the Lord? And behold, he's the angel said, and behold, Michael, boy, Michael's a bad dude. Michael is the angel that's in charge of war. When you want a war, you call Michael, eh? Is it, and Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So look at that. They, then the battle came on. But then you know what? Michael overcame, and he was able to bring uh, the, 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 the thing to God, uh, the message. Because there are actual demon beings trying to keep God's word and work from being manifested. Hallelujah. So they are actual demonic forces. Like, look at what Ephesians 6, 11 through 12 tells us. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to, what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. That's why we put the armor on, so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. I like what he said, and after you've done everything, just stand. You know, sometimes just standing is a victory. As long as you're not taking a step back, amen, but you're just standing firm on the rock of, Christ, of Jesus Christ, amen. Woo, I feel the power of God up in this place, yeah. Yeah, y'all going to get me to preach it real good, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. <laughs> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, that co-worker of yours, that wife or that husband or that child or that mother or that father, that's not who you're wrestling against. You're wrestling against flesh. You're not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Those are, that's a distinctive rank in the... Kingdom of the devil, hallelujah, with principalities being the top, top, amen. So those, those are different ranks, and it shows us that their mission is to attack and to dwarf the plans of God. They want to hinder the people of God in their pursuit to follow Jesus. But you know what? Nevertheless, they always are subject to God. I don't care how great a demon you are. I don't care how much rank you have in the kingdom of Satan. You are still subject to the God Almighty. Can somebody just give him a praise offering this morning? Hallelujah. I believe there's some excited folks up in this place today. So in the earthly mission of Jesus, we see him regularly dealing with people who were oppressed or possessed by demonic forces. You see that all through his ministry. Look at Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 and 18. And he came down with them and stood on the level place with the crowd. This is talking about Jesus. Of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem. And from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him. And he what? Healed to be healed of their diseases. As well as those who were what? Tormented with unclean spirits and what? And they were healed. Amen. Hallelujah. There's not a demon-possessed person that, got, that came in contact with Jesus that left the same way he came in. Hallelujah. Because when you meet Jesus, something happens. Hallelujah. Woo. My daughter's party back there say, Dad, stop saying hallelujah. Okay. Look at Mark chapter 10, 3 and verse 10. It says, for he healed many so that as, so as many had, had affliction pressed about him to touch him. And the, un the unclean spirits, wherever they saw him, what did they do? They fell down before him. The every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> They knew who he was because they was up in heaven when Jesus was there. Jesus was there when the devil got kicked out and all his angels got kicked out with them. They fell down before him and cried out saying, you are the son of God. That's why I don't care what kind of demonic being is attacking you or oppressing you or stirring up stuff in your family. Hallelujah. You have all authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so look, he, he healed, man, how many demons did he cast out? I'm telling you, I've been in churches where the anointing been so strong that them demon-possessed people, they got nothing to do but yell out, start squirming around like a snake on the ground. 
Come on, somebody, somebody. Y'all seen that thing. I remember one time when I was pastoring in, in Copper's Cove, we started praying against the principality. We didn't mess with them little demons down here. We went to the head. We started binding and going against the principality over that area. Hallelujah. And what happened? Every Sunday, boy, we had demon manifestations, people coming off the street uh, uh, manifesting demons. I remember one time, that was the old school, when we used to use the overhead projector. Remember, you put the songs on there, and people would sing, and, I, and somebody had just given us that projector. And, and boy, they, three people broke out, and one was crawling across the front like a snake, and I'm up here at the pulpit, and, and it started heading towards that thing. And I thought, the devil, you ain't tearing up my overhead projector. I went down and started binding that devil. And he reached up and grabbed my tie and started pulling me down. And I was like, ooh, okay, what do I do now? So I was ready to command, uh, to, to take his hand off of me. And the Lord said to me, he said, command him to loose you. I said, whoo, okay. I said, devil, loose my tie in the name of Jesus. And the figures went like this. <laughs> Came off that tie because that's the power we have against Satan and his anim- uh, demons. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is the greatest minister of all time. Now, the, the early church believed in the ministry of deliverance. Acts chapter 5 and verse 16 says, Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed hallelujah so the early church believed in the ministry of deliverance look at jesus words to us he says and these signs shall follow those who what believe anybody here believes in jesus christ so these signs will follow you the church doesn't follow the signs the signs follow the church those who believe look at in my name they will what cast out demons some of y'all say, well, I, I'm going to call Pastor Vasquez. <laughs> no, man, sometimes you ain't got nobody to call but Jesus. Amen? And just got to stand firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ. I remember a friend of mine in Korea, he told me about an a, a, a encounter he had in Japan. In Japan, he, he lived on housing, uh, on post in the housing. The people next door lived in sin. They were into wife swapping and all this other kind of stuff. So he said one time he was in the kitchen washing the dishes, and all of a sudden, how many know when, when evil come into the house? You feel that your hair stands up. And he, and he, he was washing the dishes, and the Lord said, the enemy is in your kitchen. And he just said, do, 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 do. And he said when he turned around, he seen this being that the, the, it was so big that the shoulders were touching the ceiling of the kitchen where he was in. He described the scales and the hair had like an oriental face. And he turned around, he saw that big old thing. And the only thing that came out of his mouth was Jesus. And when he said that, that thing said, eek, and right through the wall into that other house. Because at the name of Jesus, the devils tremble. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we shall cast out. Look at, look at Luke. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you what? Authority. Somebody look at somebody and say, authority. Tell them, authority. I preached a message one time. The, the Greek word from that, for that word authority is exousia. And I told folks, I said, you've got some exousia. Hallelujah. He gave us authority. To trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of, how, how, how much of the power? Some of the power of the enemy? 50%, 75%, 85%, no, all. All the power of the enemy. So it doesn't matter if you're by yourself, Jesus is with you, the Holy Ghost is with you, and God the Father is with you, and y'all going to have some church and kick some demons out of your house and out of your people. <laughs> And look at this. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
How many are excited this morning that your name is written in heaven? Hallelujah. I go to places sometimes they misspell my name is Vasquez. They put V-A-S and I got to tell them, no, it's V-A-Z. But I know when they look at that book in heaven, they're going to see George Vasquez, V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z. And I'm going to say, yeah, that's me. Hallelujah. And come on in. <laughs> Jesus gives authority. So rather than considering the ministry of deliverance as weird, some people say, I don't want to get involved with that. We must understand that it is real and needs to be accepted and understood. Satan and his demons have not left the church. They come to church with you and I. He may be sitting in this church right now. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells us that one time when Jesus went into the synagogue and that unclean spirit in that man started crying out. Now, we don't know how long that person was in that synagogue or how long that person was in the church. But when that spirit realized, hey, wait a minute, there's something different here. I know that guy. That's the son of God coming in. But he's, they haven't changed their tactics in thousands of years. They are still attacking God's people and all people. They want to hinder God's will and plans for the people of this world. So we must accept this as a, as a reality and learn to overcome in the name of Jesus. Now, one last question. Is there any doubt whether the devil is real or not? I hear five people say no. I'm going to say it again. Is there any doubt whether the devil is real or not? No. Amen. So now we know we have a real enemy. Now we're going to talk about how we're going to fight. And next week, we're really going to talk how we're going to fight. So the fourfold method of Satan's attacks. The first one is deception. We already discussed that Satan doesn't want to be recognized or acknowledged as someone real. Because he doesn't care who you worship as long as you don't worship Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen. As long as you don't worship Jesus, he doesn't care. Why? Because Jesus said to them, I am the way the truth and the life, no one, no, that, that means no one, nobody comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. You cannot get to heaven any other way except through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You must come to him. That's why all the Christians, all the religions in the world can get together in one room and they can fellowship, but they won't fellowship with us. Because some of them say, well, you know, we, 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 we go off this different place. By not worshiping, listen, I'm going to get to that. By not worshiping Jesus, you are worshiping Satan, whether you realize it or not. But you talk about I'm, I'm worshiping the devil. Because you know why? Because every false religion is ran by the devil. Hallelujah. That's why he don't care what you worship as long as you don't worship Jesus. He don't care if you worship Buddha. He don't care if you worship Muhammad. He don't care if you're in the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall. He don't care if you're in the Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. He don't care wherever, what falls or religion, as long as you do not serve Jesus. That's why in your job in different places, they say, don't come around here saying that name. Anybody been there? That's right, because when you say the name of Jesus, folks begin to get nervous. <laughs> That's right. Woo. Man, I still got another service to preach. I better save some. That's the plain fact right there. You are either for me or against me. There's no middle ground. There's no retirees in the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody said, you're either for me or against me. Hallelujah. If you don't accept Jesus, then you're condemning yourself. God doesn't condemn you. You condemn yourself because you automatically become an enemy of Jesus Christ. Wow. Hallelujah, anyhow. <laughs> the scripture is very clear who we worship and how we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, you either for me or against me. Now watch, watch this. Which side do you choose today? 
You got to make a choice. And you know what? If you don't make a choice, you automatically default to the kingdom of Satan. If you don't make a choice, you automatically fall in that other category. Ooh, I know it's getting hot in here now. Yeah, it's all right, man. You know what? Because God speaks this to me first. And I got to make sure that I'm on the right path, on the straight and narrow. Now, the ultimate deception, the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3. And according to the devil, now watch this, according to the devil, God was trying to keep Adam and Eve from a wonderful blessing. Satan's ploy was to cast doubt on God's love, faithfulness, and motives. How many here have ever been attacked by the enemy challenging God's love, God's faithfulness, and God's motive for your life? Amen. And then according to the devil, he tells them, he said, God selflessly withheld the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he was jealously guarding his position. And then according to the devil, this is all Genesis chapter 3, as he begins to break it down to Adam and Eve. God did not really love Adam and Eve or have their best interests at heart, but was more concerned about competition. God did not want them to become a God like him. The ultimate deception. Satan's attempt to assassinate God's character. And he does that every day. Was successful. Eve ate of the fruit, gave to Adam, and he ate, and they sinned. They sinned. You know, as we listen to people around us today, we see people burdened with problems and hurts, and even in the church. Who are living under the deception of the enemy. They are struggling with loads of guilt, loads of shame, condemnation. And the sad thing is that many of them will go, will die without ever knowing the true love of God for their lives. Many will die and listen to the deceptions of the enemy and die without knowing how, what a plan God had for their lives. Amen. Now, Satan may be trying to deceive you right now in this service. He may be saying, you ain't got to listen to the lies of that preacher. And he begins to speak to people. And he said, if God really loves you, then why did your parents divorce and abandon you? If God really loves you, why was your father so abusive? Is that how your heavenly father is going to be? If God really loves you, why did you have to be molested sexually and or emotionally abused? What kind of God would permit that? Satan's deception and lies will tell you, I must have, it must have been my fault. He says, People get to people to thinking, I must have deserved it. Come on, y'all with me. I know there's some people in here that have gone through this. And you thought, I must have deserved this because no, it didn't happen to anybody else. And then, of course, some people say, I am nothing and I will never amount to anything. That's the deception and the lies of Satan. But you know what? Look at John 8, 44. And Jesus talking to the religious leaders. He tells them, you are of your father, the devil. I don't know about you, but I've called some people child of the devil. (laughs) Amen. You're either a child of God or a child of the devil. That's it. There's no in between. And now, listen closely. I don't want this to fly over your head. If a child of God marries a child of Satan... That child of God will always have problems with his father-in-law. Wow. 
Why am I having so many problems in my marriage? Well, you married a daughter of Satan. And your father-in-law <laughs> is doing everything he can to destroy you. Wow, okay, I know y'all didn't get that. Maybe at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're like, Whoa, okay, yeah, that's right, man, hey, amen. That was good, you know. In the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resource. Why? For he is a liar and the father of them. Now, some people think it's all right to tell a lie. I'm going to tell you what time. There's a scripture in Revelation that says all liars have their place in the lake of fire and brimstone. Well, it's just a little white lie. It don't matter. A lie is a lie is a lie. Come on. Somebody say amen. A lie is a lie. How many times do you have to tell a lie to be a liar? Once. You tell a lie, you're a liar. Plain and simple. I know y'all looking at me like, man, I ain't giving that or nothing. <laughs> Number two, quickly, occult activities. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 through 12. This is when the people of God are getting ready to cross over into the promised land. And look, he says, God tell them, when you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. If you don't know what that word abomination means, you should look it up. It's something that solicits an extreme dislike from your stomach almost. It's something that makes God want to throw up. That's how bad an abomination is. It says, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. You know what that means? Human sacrifice. They used to take the little babies and put them in these metal things and they would have a pole that would push them into the fire as the baby was screaming and being boiled alive inside that thing. He said, those that practice witchcraft or soothsayer or one who interprets omens or sorcerer or one who conjures spells or medium or spiritus or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are abomination to the Lord because of their abomination. The Lord your God drives them out before you. Now listen to this. The Christian recognizes the unseen world as a scene of supernatural battle between good and evil. Prayer is our vehicle through which we speak to God and we engage our enemy. Many non-believers contact the spiritual world, the supernatural world, through through. Um, Occult practices, and in doing so, now watch this. In doing so, they align themselves with the kingdom of Satan. Whether you believe it or not, or whether you know it or not, if you are involved in some of these things, you are aligning yourself with the kingdom of the devil. Can somebody say amen with me? Witchcraft in all of its forms, I don't care how it comes, is an abomination to God. The entertainment business has glamorized the occult with the single purpose of enticing people into occultic activities. I better get off this point, boy. Y'all getting quiet. <laughs> Things like Ouija board. Anybody here? Hands up. Let's be honest. Anybody here ever mess with a Ouija board? Before I got saved, I went over to my girlfriend's house. And her, her friend was there, and they had this Ouija board. And I was like, oh, what's that? She said, look, ask a question. And I put my hand on that thing, and I, and I asked the question. I said, where's my aunt? And that thing began to move. And it spelled out heaven, and I took my hand off that thing. My girlfriend didn't know my, that my aunt had died or that she was in heaven, and I never touched this since. But that's Ouija board. It's not a game. It, it's serious. Handwriting analysis, automatic handwriting. You know what automatic handwriting is? Now, some, a lot of these things, they tell you to blank out your mind. That's why when you blank out your mind, that's where the devil come in and try to take over your mind. Nowhere in the scripture does to tell the Christian to blank his mind out. The meditation that we do, we meditate on God. We don't blank our minds and go, Ooh. okay? So anytime you get into something that says blank your mind out, watch out. That's not of God. Automatic handwriting is that you go somewhere quiet. You put a piece of paper down in a pen, and you just start to blank out your mind and just let your hands start to write. <laughs> ESP, horoscopes. What about horoscopes? Go ahead and keep messing with them horoscopes. Astrology, fortune telling. I was in Louisiana a couple of weeks ago with my wife that was out there reading palms. I said, baby, go ahead and get your palm read. <laughs> she said, I get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> no. we, 
Oh, it's shit. It's something innocent. They're going to put my hand there. You know what? You're opening the doorway. You're opening the doorway. White magic, black magic, incantations, uh, charms, fetishes, all these things. Now, watch this. I'm not saying that as soon as you do something like this that a demon's going to come and jump on you. But you open a doorway. And I'm going to tell you something about the devil. He's a legalist. Okay? So what he does, he'll stand in the courtroom and he'll uh, uh, attack you and accuse you. And you've opened a door and the devil say, well, he, he, he gave me legal ground into his life. And you open that door and what's going to be your defense then? Well, I didn't know. You know what? The Bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But, but I didn't know. The Bible is there. It tells you exactly what you should or should not do. Demons want habitation. They want to inhabit people if they can. If they can't inhabit people, they don't inhabit animals. Y'all remember the scripture where Jesus cast the demons out to the pigs? And it was, anybody ever heard of Son of Sam? Son of Sam was a mass murderer in New York from July 76 to July 77. He killed six people. He wounded eight other people. He was into the cult. And when they, when they interviewed him, the neighbor's dog used to bark. And give him orders of going out to kill. So d demons will get into animals. Okay. And if they can't get into animals. They get on uh, objects. Uh, houses. Amulets. Statues. I remember some friends of us in Korea. The girls they lived upstairs. And they came to me and said. Brother Vasquez. Last night I looked over across at my other, my, uh, my other friend. And I saw a face of demon in her. And I said something. Y'all open the doorway in your, in your room. So we went up to the room. I started looking around. I saw this lamp that they had just bought. It was dark blue. So I started looking at it. It was the shape of a dragon. I said, there's your doorway right there. They got rid of that lamp, sealed that doorway, never had any more problems. Can somebody say amen with me? My, a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, one time he was preparing a message. And he just kind of stopped for a moment. He turned the TV on and just kind of started flipping through the channels. And he stopped on this channel, uh, one of those movies, Friday the 13th, not Friday the 13th, uh, Elm Street with Freddy. Freddy came out of the TV and stood in his living room. <laughs> ah! Just for a moment that he stopped, that demon came out and stood in his living room. And you know what he said? In the name of Jesus, get out of this house. Phew! And that devil disappeared. They want habitations. So let's quickly, let's go to physical illness. In Luke chapter, so he, deception, occultic activities, physical illness. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, thou art loose from your infirmity. He didn't say you are healed. He said you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Because some sicknesses are not physical. They are demonic. Hallelujah. And no matter how much medicine you take, no matter how much terror therapy you get, that devil's not coming out until somebody with authority takes control and commands that devil to loose that woman at 18 years she left remember the little kid the, the father with the kid with, and he said he's got a spirit a dumb and deaf spirit people would have said oh well this guy's got some he's severe ADHD or something's wrong with him no what was wrong with him was that he was demon possessed or oppressed Jesus cast that spirit out and the kid was set free now watch this if you re read the scripture I'm not going to read it but I'm going to turn to it so y'all can write it down if you want to I'm, I'm good I got very little time left. That's Mark 7, 9, 17 through 27. And Jesus asked him, he says, how long has this kid been like that? And the father said, from a child. And you look up that word child, it means infant or infancy. So that devil had been in that child since he was an infant. And next week, I'm going to tell you a story about how somebody was born with a demon inside of them. Y'all probably look at me like crazy. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. Look at Luke 9, 1. 1, 2. Go Luke, Luke 9, 1, 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. 
So there's something, there's a difference between a physical illness brought by the devil and an illness in that body. I'm going to call all the praise and worship team to come on up. I'm going to call all the altar call people to come on up because we're going to get ready to do some battle right now. Y'all with me? The last one, mental disorders. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. How many remember that story of Legion? Read it when you get home. Read it when you get home. This guy was so demon-possessed that he would break chains. He would live in the tombs. He was naked, running around crazy. Any one of us would say, man, that guy's crazy, right? We think he's crazy. I remember growing up in New York, there was this guy named Raymond. We called him Crazy Raymond. Anytime you see him on the street, you better cross over to the other side of the street because you don't know if he was going to chase you. And I got to think, I said, maybe that guy was demon-possessed. Well, when Jesus talked to this guy, and he, he knew it was a demon inside of him. My praise team is coming. Yeah, they're coming. All right, let's go. So Jesus asked him, he said, what are you, what's your name? He said, Legion, for we are many. That word legion in the Roman army meant up to 6,000 soldiers. So imagine that guy, he's living with 6,000 demons inside of him. Man, one or two are bad, but could you imagine 6,000? Jesus didn't tell him you healed from your, your craziness. He cast that devil out, and the Bible said that he was in a sound mind sitting because some people are being misdiagnosed. Now, I believe in science. I worked in the medical field for over 30 years. I know there are people that your body reacts and your mind, you have chemical imbalances and stuff like that. But I've also seen stuff that are demons causing it. Can somebody say amen with me? Okay. Look at schizophrenia. That's, oh, I forgot to tell you the story about this girl. That girl right there, this is a symbol of her. When I got here, a friend of mine told me about a pastor friend of his, an evangelist, that went to visit this teenager in the psych ward. She had done so many drugs that her, the doctor said she burned her brain out. And all she did was sit in this rocking chair with her eyes open, and they would put her in bed, and then they would sit her up, and then she, that was it. So when the pastor walks in with this evangelist, right away the Lord checks their spirit, and the evangelist casts the demon out of her. And that girl woke up. And the first thing she said was, what took you so long? There are people that are bound waiting for you and I to come and minister unto them to take authority. And so that that way they can be set free. Somebody say amen with me. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Look at the symptoms of schizophrenia. Hallucinations. Seeing things. You know what? There's some devils that bring hallucinations to our lives, don't they? There are some demons that appear to us in our lives. Watch this. Another one is hearing voices. I hear voices. Don't you hear voices? Come on, praise team. Y'all, y'all good. Come on. Praise team, get ready. Hallucinations, I'm getting ready to end. Here, I hear the voice of God. I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay? What about fear? It's another symptom of schizophrenia. Mood changes, anger, anxiety, loss of interest or pleasure in activities. I was working at Darnell doing CAT scans. And I got a request to do a head CAT scan because at Darnell, they used to have the psych ward on the fifth floor. They had a, psych, uh, a pediatric psych ward and an adult psych ward. So we got a request to do a CAT scan on this kid's brain 13 year, 34 year old, 14 year old. And the reason below it said, hearing voices. And as I read that right away, the Lord checked me and said, that's something demonic. That's not something physical. So when the kid came down, I opened a conversation with him. I said, hey, what are you doing here? And you know, well, my parents, they went to the priest and the priest told them to bring me to the hospital. So, you know, in the Catholic church, they do exorcisms. But they won't do an exorcism on somebody until you go to the hospital and you get checked out physically. Make sure that it's nothing physical, that it's spiritual. Amen? Oh, we missed this, folks. And so I asked him, I said, so what happened? He goes, well, I'm hearing voices. I said, oh, really? You know, I'm, I'm pretty slick when I talk to people. I said, I'm getting ready. I said, what do the voices tell you to do? 
Well, the voices tell me to destroy things. The voices tell me to hurt people. The voices tell me to hurt my parents. Clear cut. I mean, if I could and I wanted to, I could have cast that demon right out of that kid. But if he doesn't accept Jesus Christ, that spirit will come back with seven spirits more worse than him. And the worst, he'll end up worse than he is now. I was stuck. I was at work. I said, I just pray for him. I don't know where he's at now, but if he never got any help, Lord knows what happened to him. Second Timothy 1 and 7 tells us God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting arguments, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring in every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. The devil and his demons are real. There's a fourfold method of his attacks, deception, occultic activities, physical illness, mental disorders. And I'm going to end this message today and I'm going to begin next week's message with a question. Can a Christian be demon possessed? And Ezekiel 8, 1 through 18, read it when you get home, study it. That's what we're going to pick up next week. Now, I've asked the praise team to do a song. I want everybody to stand. Before we get to ministering to people, I want you to know how good God is. How many realize how good God is? How many realize how faithful God has been through our lives, even when we didn't serve him? Come on. He was keeping an eye on us. Trying to guide us in the path to the purpose and the plan that he has for our lives. So I want you just to sing this song before we get into the altar call. And if during the song you feel like you want to come forward and you want somebody to pray with you, maybe you, you, God has revealed to you an open door. They have been trained. They know how to pray with you to renounce and to close those doors. But I want to sing this song first. Go ahead. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God How many know that we serve a good God? Sing it. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all of God's people raising their hands and saying... right now.
need that this morning. Come on, sing. For my life, you have been so, so. Hallelujah. How many believe that? I want every head bowed and every eye closed. God is calling you today. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If there's somebody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or maybe you walked with Jesus one time and you've turned your back, I want to pray right now that you could be a child of the kingdom right now. Just say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died to pay for my sins. And I want to serve you today, Lord. I want you, Jesus, to come into my life. Break every chain of the Satan in my life. And set me free. Because I know you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Right now, Jesus, I give my life to you. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you pray that prayer, I want you to lift your hand and let us know you prayed that prayer this morning. Is there anybody here that prayed that prayer this morning? There's one hand, one hand, one hand, two hands. Anybody else? There's another hand over here. There's another hand. There's another hand right back here. Praise God. Praise God. I would like to ask all those that, if you raise your hand, just come up here to the front so I can pray for you real quick. If you raise your hand, come on. You are a child of God right now. You have been set free. You have been set free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just come right up here right now. There was another hand. Was there another hand over here? Come on, church, let's rejoice. The best decision you ever made. Hallelujah. God is good. I know y'all going through some stuff, but God is the one that's going to get you through. Okay? We, we, we try to rely on natural things and stuff, but God's going to. You watch him. You serve him, and you watch what he's going to do. Let me pray for you. Everybody extend your hands up here to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Only you can break the change. Only you can set them free, Lord. And only you know what's going on in their lives right now, Father God. But I thank you, God. They've made a decision. They want to serve you. They want to be set free. They're tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, Lord. They are a new creation in Jesus. Lord, and right now, I pray that your angels will be encamped around about them, Father God, and lead them and guide them. Oh, we got another soul here in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. And we're going to sing your goodness, God's goodness. Everybody sing with me. How many believe that? Praise God. There's still some other people here that need to get set free. Don't leave from here the way you came in. Say, I'm coming for it. Break it, Lord. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it right now. Yes. We got time. We got time. Let him break that. Every door closed. Come on, sing it with me, church. You're running out Oh, he's coming after you right now. Don't get Break it, break that, break that, break it, break it. Yes, we're still coming. Break it in Jesus' name. Set it free right now through the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't care what the devil says. Jesus is the authority. He's the one that does it all. He's the one that can do it all because all is possible. Come on, church. Goodness is running. Goodness is running.
there's still some here that want to get set free. God wants to set you free today. He wants to set you free today from doubt. Or from, he wants to set you free. Come on, don't go out of here the way you came in. Say, I want to get set free. I want to be free indeed. Free indeed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't look at the person next to you. You begin to move. You begin to move and say, I need more of Jesus in my life. I need the power of the Holy Ghost to guide me in this fight. If he's still talking to you, come. Come. Just sing it. Just sing it. Just sing it. Just sing it. Come on, church. God is still ministering. God is still ministering. He wants his people to be set free. Free indeed. Do not believe the lies of the devil. For Jesus is greater. There's no other name on heaven and earth but why we must be saved. Thank you, praise team. I'm sorry if it sounded like I was yelling at y'all for to get up here. I apologize. But I did tell y'all 1020, didn't I? And uh, the 1020 only comes twice a day, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> just, just sing that softly one more time as we get ready to close. I mean, I, I still feel, I still feel that God wants to touch people's lives. Don't worry about what somebody's going to think when you come forward. This is between you and God. I don't know about you, but I need him every day. Every moment of every day, I can't make it without Jesus. He's calling you. Come, 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 come. Sister, can we pray for you? Come on. Where's my sister? Uh, where's my sister? What's her name? Oh, my life. Alicia. Oh, she's over. Alicia. The... Come over here. Listen, listen, listen. Don't mind. Let him have his way, sis. Let him have his way. Let all of his love and all of his peace pour down on you right now. Hallelujah. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Let him into every area of your heart, every area of your life. That's right. That's right. Let him have his way. Jesus, right now. Right now. Everything. Everything dedicated to you, Jesus. Don't have your my way. life you have, have your way. Been so, have your so way. Good. Cindy. Come Every on. breath that I have made, I will see of the goodness of God. I'm telling you right now, no, no, I'm gonna pray for you. You pray for others, it's your turn today. You need a mighty outpouring, supernatural outpouring of God for this next level that he's taking you to. Okay? And he knows your heart. And he knows that you're ready to go. But you need that supernatural outpouring, that manifestation. I want you to close your eyes and raise your hands. As the sister's going to come pray for you, let him have his way. Let him have his way. Amen. You give to so many others. Let God give to you right now. Let God give to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name. A supernatural outpouring. Yes. Ooh.
Get that little young girl behind you. Yes. Come here, sister. Come here. Esther, I'm going to need you. You ready to go in deeper? Raise your hands. Don't let anything hold back. Because he's going to pour that anointing down upon you right now. You're going to feel it in your hands. You're going to feel it coming down across your head. You're going to feel it coming down over your body, into your heart, into your spirit, into your soul. Let him have his way. Let him have it. Submit everything. Submit everything. Say, God, everything I give to you. God, I give everything to you. Let him have his way. Come on, Astrid. Pray with her. Pray with her. I'm going to get ready to close the service. But you know what? If you want more and more of God, we got another service after this. And, and, and you know what? There, there, there's no time limit with that service. I believe God is going to show up and show out. God has touched lives here today. God has saved lives. Let's give the Lord a great big hand praise for that. I know there's people here that could truly say, I've been changed. Something has happened in my life, and I know that I am different. This is usually when the translation people come up, you know, and, and I'm going to go close it. They usually give thanks to the speaker. So I'm going to give thanks to myself for the message that God used me to bring. <laughs> I know some of y'all that don't really know me, you see me, and you say, man, that guy's, he looks really serious, like, I've been called like the dude from the Sopranos, or one of the mafia guys, man. But when you get to know me, I'm a pretty fun guy, man. Thank you. Remember, next week, we got prayer on Monday, equip on Wednesday, youth group, uh, life groups on Friday, a service on Sunday and if you still want you when we dismiss the altar stays open you know Jacob said he said I will not let you go until you bless me you know I've always preached that sometimes you just got to grab a hold of the altar and say I will not go until you bless me and the whole service can dismiss and people can leave. They'll start turning the lights out and you're like, I will not leave here, God, until you bless me. Sometimes we got to fight for that blessing. Look at Daniel, 21 days, man, 21 days he was fighting. How many thank God for what he's done here this morning? Thank you, guys. I, I, feel, I feel the love coming from you towards me. I, pre I appreciate that. The altar stays open, okay? So we're going to dismiss the visitors at this time. Where's Pastor Stoltz? He's going to take him to the back here. All the first-time visitors. Brother Joey, can you take them to Pastor Stoltz back there? Any first-time visitors, can you come back to the, so the pastors can meet you? Over this way, anybody? Okay. We dismiss those online. Hey, I believe that there were some people in their living room and in their bedroom shouting and jumping during the time when God was praising the Lord. I believe we're going to hear messages and they're going to say, wow, man, that, that, there was power of God there. If you have any question about this message, call the office. We will help you and work through it. Now we're going to dismiss. The praise team is all awesome as always, right? And I told them I would try to end it so they could get a little break before they come up for the next service. And I did. It's 1046. They got 14 minutes. So the altar stays open. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you.